Okay, hi. Um, well, I'm going to try and do um, a little tutorial on how to make a ball bounce. Okay, so but before we do this, um, maybe the best thing to do is to show you uh, some examples uh, so you can get an idea. Now, if I go in, I've got two balls bouncing here. One that I did with dynamics and one that I did with uh, just by hand animating it. So this is the first ball. The render is slightly different. I'll play that one again. So here's the first ball. And the second ball. So one was done with Dynamics, which is my simulation engine. And the other one was done just hand animating. So I wonder if you can... Which one do you think is hand animated and which one is using dynamics. It will all become apparent very soon. Okay, so just some science before we start um, about balls and gravity, etc, etc. Okay, um, here is a little diagram that I knocked up in Flash. I can find it. This is all a bit ad hoc because it's all live. Okay, so these are two balls. Uh, so I've drawn this little cliff. You've got ball A and ball B. And um, Basically, Bolly just teeters off the top of this and falls into the water, and B, Bolly is shot out along the top of the cliff. But here's the deal: both balls end up, you know, coming off the top of the cliff at the same time. Now, is the kind of misconception that uh, if you run forwards um, off a tall surface? somehow it's going to take you longer to hit the ground. It's almost as if the, this this horizontal velocity, as they say in physics, is going to affect your downward drop, which it, it, in actual fact it doesn't at all. I mean, the, the, there is no effect on it. In fact, um, I don't know if you've ever watched the program Mythbusters, but they sh tried to show that if you shot a bullet and dropped a bullet from the same height, both bullets should actually hit the ground at the same time. It's just, of course, one travels much further. Okay. Oh, sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Mark Stevenson. So I told you it was live, so there'll be occasional blips like this. And um, another couple of things I want to show you, if I can just, uh, is some videos that I have. Sorry. There we go. Already making errors. Um, I'll show you the videos. The, the first video is this ball in a in, in a ballistics cart, which kind of reveals what I was talking about about horizontal, the horizontal motion being completely independent of the downward motion. So here the ball drops in exactly the same way that as it would drop if it was falling. Just if if that cart wasn't moving it would drop into the, the funnel in exactly the same motion. And you can see here, even with a moving ball, because the, the two things are independent, it just falls back in again. And finally, another thing that is very important if you're going to do any animation um, is to understand squash and stretch. Now, I would advise everyone to watch this video. I'm going to put a link to it on Facebook. I hope you all join up on Facebook. And this is the 12 principles of animation. Now, one of the very important ones is squash and stretch, uh, which uh, is revealed in this video here of a golf ball hitting a wall. Now, this is not faked. This is the amount of deformation a golf ball has if it hits a wall. And indeed, it's the level of deformation that the ball has and reformation as it goes back into its original shape that enables the golf ball to rebound, to bounce. Um, objects that have very little deformation, like bowling balls, don't bounce nearly as much. Okay, so, going on to Maya. So I'm just going to open up Maya now. It may already be open. Maya. Right. Now, okay, so, I know you guys are already relatively acquainted with Maya, but, um, Anyway, we're just going to go through some basic things. And uh, if you know this already, maybe you can skip some of this part of the video. Well, the first thing is the workspace. 
Now, um, Windows has some workspaces here. They've got modeling. And if you switch on these workspaces, you get slightly different, you know, different looks that are meant to suit what you're doing. Now, what we're going to be doing is animation. Now they have an animation workspace on this. I don't think it's very good. Um, where is it? Workspace animation. So yeah, I mean it's okay, but I think it could be better. So the good thing about Maya is it's very customizable. So what we're going to do is make our own workspace. So the easiest way to do that is first of all make your own shelf. So I'll go Windows and then I'm going to go to settings preferences and then down there to shelf editor shelf editor yeah I click on the shelf editor and I get this window and here it's got a bunch of kind of bits and pieces and I'm just going to click on this one here with a little um, kind of cross on it and this is a new shelf so make a new shelf and it always gives it a kind of default name. We're going to give it a better name. I'll call it my shelf. Okay, and then I'm going to save all shelves. And you'll see my shelf has popped up here. So I have a shelf. There's nothing on it, but this is a good way, the good thing that you can put all your tools that you're going to use. So the next thing we do, we go back to the same menu, Windows. And go to settings preferences and this time we're going to go with the panel editor not the shelf but the panel click on the panel and we're going to make um, you have edit layouts yeah so sorry layouts go to layouts and what we want is a new layout yeah a one that's better than this one so we're going to go to new layout and then on new layout we're going to give it a different name again it gives it a crap name panel configuration 22 uh, not very interesting so the layout is going to be my layout yeah okay I said it was a good name it's not that much better but okay better than panel configuration 22 so my layout and then when we've got to my layout we're going to go to this button here and it says edit layouts so I'm oh, sorry I'm going to just press enter so uh, sorry oh my layouts already here oops my layouts here so I'm going to get rid of this first I think I, I did this before okay I'm panel configuration to I'll call this my, my layout my layout yeah and then we're going to press enter and see my layout now is on the list and then I'm going to edit my layout. So go to my layout and presently it's just a single pane. Now what we want is we want three panes split top. So three panes split top. Where is it? There we go. Three panes split top. And it's kind of produced something here. Okay. So and then we're going to try and work out what we're going to put in each pane. So we have the contents configuration here. So number one, I'll go for a side view. And number two can be perspective, that's fine. And three is going to be the graph editor. If I can find it. There we go, graph editor. Right. I'm just going to get rid of this. Right, graph editor. Okay. So that's the contents. And now if I go back to layouts, I'm going to add it to shelf. And look all of a sudden my layout has appeared on the shelf. So I can close this now. And if I was to say change my layout, I've got this up here and bingo, I can go back to this layout again anytime I like. I can just press on this button. It's on my shelf. Okay? So that's the first thing. Get your layout sorted. Secondly, um, just make sure that all your settings are correct. So, oh, sorry, again, if you go into your Windows button and you go to Settings Preferences, again, what you're going to do 
is you're going to go just over here to preferences yeah click on the preferences tab and then you've got all these various buttons here now there's only a few that we're going to be really looking at and the first one is the settings tab now I you know you've got a range of uh, frame speeds here you can set them to I normally go for 24 um, that's that's film speed if you like um, uh, lots of digital stuff's on 30 frames a second but I, I like 24 yeah um, and then you can go to the time slider now this is a kind of important because when you're doing playback playbacks of your animation by pressing on this play button here you don't want play every frame on because what that does is it plays every frame and it doesn't play at the correct speed so what you want to do is you want to press on this down button here and make sure it's the same as what you have set your frame rate to now in my case frame rate is 24 frames so 24 times 1 means at the same frame rate 24 times 0 0.5 means at half the frame rate 24 times 2 means at double the frame rate so 24 times 1 then we're almost there go to the animation tab and the in the settings and you will see there are all these things and we're just looking at tangents now for this exercise I mean I'll, I'll explain a bit more about tangents later I think it's easiest to have it set in either auto or spline so either that both on spline or both on auto not plateau sorry both on auto I'm just gonna leave mine in auto for the time being okay so save these settings and then we're almost ready to go right so what you have to do what we're going to do is we're going to do a ball rolling down a slope and um, we're going to try and get a nice naturalistic look to it so first things first you have to import the ball so I'm going to import mine so oh before I do that I'll, hang on, I'll import the ball in my case I've just downloaded this onto the desktop of my computer if I can find it uh, there we go the ball in your case what you're going to have to do okay what you're gonna to have to do is you will have to go to the Pearson's College website we have all the stuff in the Google Drive so all the um, all the rigs are on here. If you go into the Google Drive, let's wait for mine to load up. Here we go, still taking a bit of time. It's getting, all right. So, um, sorry, so what we're gonna do is you're gonna go on to Escape A1, 